there's sometimes there are things that are just so obvious that you just, you, you just don't really realize it. That's what this is, a, you're gonna see here. As I'm talking about these, you're gonna say, duh. But they really make a big difference. First thing, one of the things that we all have, it, we all have seen on the internet when you're having a web conference is that you'll see the person with their computer, with the laptop or the computer, and the camera's here, and they're looking down. Well, it's obvious, because they're, the, they're, the, they're on the table, on the desk, and they're looking down. Well, what you're doing is you're looking up their nose, or you're looking up their eye, this way. It's very, very uncomfortable and very unseemly. All you need to do is put a book underneath your laptop, just to lift it up. The whole idea in all filmmaking is you want to be looking at the subject head on. Just looking at them straight on, just like I'm looking at you now. You don't want to be having this, you know, looking down at them or looking up at them. So if you've got a clip a type of a camera thing that you on a desktop, just whatever you do, just create some kind of a little hole before it, so it's going, always going to be eye level. And you want the camera on all laptops and computers mostly is right here. Well, you don't have a tendency sometimes to see it because it's black. It's normally black. So what you do is you get a little piece of colored tape, you know, the fluorescent tape that you can have, like duct tape or whatever, just tear off a little piece of it and stick it behind. So they're just there, you can notice it. Or a post-it note behind, uh, right be then, just so that you're constantly looking at that. So that way you're looking at the camera, you're looking at the subject. When you're teaching your students, um, it, you, uh, you have a tendency when you're on a webinar is that there's a few people might be on there and you're looking at the screen, but you're not looking directly at them. There's something very powerful. You know, as I'm talking to you, I keep, I look at you. I look at, and the same thing that you do when you're in a class. You look at your students, you look directly at them. You can tell you're, you're engaging them. When you're on a webinar, that has a tendency not to happen because you're just, you're looking at the screen. Well, the camera is looking, is, you're not looking at the camera. So that's the one thing I would suggest is really focus on looking directly into the camera and lift it, put it on some books. All right. Um, lighting. This is really, really an important uh, uh, part of whenever you're doing any kind of your webinar. The benefit that you have is that you're working here in, the, uh, in an environment where you have fluorescent lighting usually in all the classrooms in your office, and it's above lighting and it's spread out. The thing is, is if you're in an office where you're going to have, um, there's a window, make sure you never ever point to have the window behind you. And a lot of people do that because they just think it's, the lighting is beautiful. But what happens is the camera's iris sees that light and it adjusts the lighting so that you end up being blacked out. You've probably noticed it before when you've seen talking to somebody it's because they have the window behind them. You just want to make sure that you always have your light source in front of you. In addition to that, if you're talking from your home and you don't have overhead lighting like that, make sure that the light is not too harsh. One of the things that will happen, they call it blowout in filmmaking, where that you'll see, I mean, you've probably seen it before, where the person just looks really hot. The, the, you can, there's no more skin tone to them at all. Their hair is, is really b bizarre. It just, that's because the lighting is either too bright or it's too close. So you want to set that up so that you have this really nice. A lot of times what you can do is um, get, if you have white walls in your, uh, in your um, office or wherever you're talking, have a light source bouncing off the wall, really close to the wall. It'll reflect on you and fill you up. So these are all the little, just little tips and hints so far as lighting is, is important. Um, so David, what would you suggest in their homes that they do, like if you are, I mean, this is tricky as an example. She sits in her dining room, and so in her dining room, you know, she has a window behind her. So we broke that rule with Christy's not at all. But, I mean, would, is it better for her to have the window facing the window so that the light shining on her? Good question. Yeah, there's a couple, a couple things you want to do. 
a lot of it has to do with the time of day. If, um, if you're going to be having a, a, a webinar and you know that um, the people are going to be um, talking at a specific time of day and you know that that wind, that sun, comes through the window at a particular time, you may not want to do it then because it'll, even it'll blow you out. The wind will come through and it'll just, it'll just wash you right out too much light. But if it's a time of the day where it's already gone there, well, that's, that could be nice. That natural light is just beautiful. So that can really add to it. You have natural light and you have um, uh, artificial light. The two on the color scale are completely different. And one fights with the other. Natural light always wins. However, there are things that you can do to, um, to provide for that. One of them is that you can pull a shade down on the window. You'll still have some natural light in, but then you can use your chandelier, your overhead lighting, and it'll kind of wash over you. The other thing you want to be careful of is what they call raccoon eyes. A lot of times when you have lighting, oh, yeah, everybody sees, we've all seen that. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. You know, it looks like somebody's got black eyes on, they look awful. Um, so you, want to get, so you don't want to have harsh lighting above your head. Um, a, a nice rule of thumb is that if you have a nice lamp and uh, you can just put the lamp or, over to the side a little bit or maybe to the front right around here, as you turn it on with the lampshade on there, that'll work good. If you want, you can tilt the lampshade so that the light bounces off a wall. Or, if you, you're going to be doing a lot of this, what would be great to do is to have a, um, like a whiteboard, a portable whiteboard and an easel. Have it in front of you and put a couple lights there bouncing off that light and it'll just give you this beautiful soft light look to it and that becomes your little studio. And basically that's kind of what you guys are doing now, is you're creating your own little little studio. Um, it, you can, there's a thing, a place on Amazon and there's a place called Cowboy Studios. You can literally pick up a little a light stand and a light and it's in this, um, it's in a little thing that folds and opens up and you can put that and point that at you and it's the lights are inside of like a little tent that with a white uh, screen on it. They're like maybe $35, $40. And it's a really wonderful little thing. That way, whenever you're talking to your, 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 you've created your own little studio, you just plug it in, you can talk to them at night that way. And it's also going to, because of the fact that it's got that little light box on it, is what they call it, it's gonna, the light's going to flow over you. It's going to be a nice, even tone on you. It's going to look great. The other thing about lighting is, um, is your background. If your background is just a, just a white wall, It'll work. Sometimes the lighting will bounce off of it. It'll be abstracting. For me, as a film person, there's nothing worse than just a blank white wall. It's just awful. So whenever I do any kind of a, a, a filmmaking at all, I'll always put like a plant behind them, a bookshelf, a, a, a painting, a picture. I have this, I was lucky enough years and years ago when I was editing, um, I met the man who knew the photographer who shot the iconic photograph of uh, Martin Luther King when he was standing by his desk with his arms folded with Gandhi in the back. Well, I ordered that in a poster size and I had it framed. And that's in my office. It's just a, an inspiration for me. But every time that's, it's behind me, whenever I'm on air, and people always stop and what's that? And it's a great way to have start a conversation. So put something behind you that means something to you, something personal. And it just... Again, it's just your audience is going to warm up to you and just realize that this, they're going to get to know you a little bit by something that's behind you rather than just that blank white wall. In addition to that, having something behind you, a plant, a book, a, a, a bookshelf, or, um, or a painting, it's going to absorb some of that light so that it's going to make your, your place look more like a studio, if you will, more enjoyable. This is a visual medium, what you're doing, and you're going into into a place where most of you haven't been before. When they're staring at the screen and trying to learn from you, if it's visually pleasant, it's going to really make a big difference. Instead of the stark white wall, you know, brick or something. So keep that in mind. OK, audio. Now this is, um, this is the one part of the, that I can't stress enough. There are, uh, in filmmaking, um, 
one of the things that we, we talk about is that you can set up the most beautiful shot with a conversation with somebody on the deathbed and they're talking and it's just so beautiful, you, the lighting's perfect, and you have this really shitty audio. It's going to ruin everything. It's just going to ruin everything. The, the whole shot is just tossed out. So the same thing when it comes to with your students. When they're listening to you on there, it's scratchy or it just or it sounds like you're in a tin can or it, go, it keeps going in and out. You want to make sure that whatever, even, even if the lighting is bad, you want your audio to be good. So there's a couple things that you can do. Number one, you wanna, when you have, your, you have your computer, you don't want to have it too, too far from you if you're just going to be using the microphone on the laptop itself. A lot of the laptops don't have really good built-in microphones. It's just, not, it's just not one of the things that they care about. They may, they, and even the audio, so when the playbacks, a lot of you can tell that sometimes they just don't care about that as well but particularly the microphones. So what I suggest is when you're going to use Zoom or you're going to use Skype or whatever uh, you're going to be using is to make sure that before you go, and you go on and you test, your, test it and listen to, listen to it, you put playing it back, listen to what it sounds like. Test it with somebody who's listening to you from someplace else. You can call a friend or whatever. Say, how do I sound? If you don't sound good, if it doesn't sound right, a couple things you can do. Number one, that um, the micro, the thing that comes with your either your iPhone or the Samsungs or the, the ones that plug in your ears and they have that little tiny microphone that dangles there. I'll tell you what, those things are amazing. They really, really work good. And anymore, if you have something in your ear, well, we're used to it. We don't care. The audience doesn't care if you have headphones on or if you've got a. We, we understand. This is a technology. This is what you're doing. So you don't have to worry about that. The earbuds that the uh, iPhone has are the Bluetooth ones. Same thing, the microphones are amazing, the technology that's in there. So that's, that's a really very cheap way to do it. For me, I have what they call the Rode mic. It's a Rode USB. And it's like a, a studio microphone. It's really, you know, just, you know, I have that on a boom so that when I'm on it, it just, it sound, I sound like I'm at a radio station. It's really nice. And they have another one that's called a Blue Yeti. That's what a lot of the um, podcasters use as well, or YouTubers and things like that. But you can get them on Amazon. The thing is, they can run between two, three hundred dollars just for the microphone itself. So it's a little pricey. However, if this is if this is what you're going to be investing in, um, it's something to look forward to look into. I would first try the little the little bud things on your ears. A lot of times, I'm one of them. I might be a big guy, but I have these little tiny ear canals, and those damn things will not stay in my ear. So and then that's a real issue for a lot of people, is that they just, those things keep popping out of their ears. Um, so with that in mind, you can get headphones, if you want, that have the microphone on them, They're like a Bluetooth, or you can get the kind that has the, the little thing. That works as well. So try different, different uh, tools that you can use, but make sure your audio really is kick-ass. That's really going to make a huge difference for your audience. Depending on the type of software that it is, again, that's where you want to test. Uh, I think it's very important what you just mentioned about the soft voices. There's nothing wrong with having a soft voice. As a matter of fact, a lot of times when you have a soft voice, you have a tendency to draw your audience in. However, there's a difference between drawing your audience in and your audience saying, I'm done. I can't handle this anymore because it just becomes work instead of pleasure. So you want to make sure that if you have a soft voice, you have something that's going to really elevate it. With the software that you're talking about, everybody's is going to be different. You just want to try it out with the, have, have somebody on, the, on another end uh, with, on a scoop or a Zoom call and try to hit the expand or the immediate and say which one sounds better, which, which is working. And then, there's, and then you can also boost up your level. On your levels, you have automatic, you know, that the, the, the software automatically chooses if it wants to raise your voice or lower it, and then you have manual. Sometimes you just want to play around with manual. So, you know, for some reason, the computer, the software, isn't really picking up my voice. It's not, it's not adjusting correctly. So you put it on manual, and you manually boost it up, and then that'll work for you. So the software isn't perfect, so just play with it and say, you know what, 
on this particular computer with on this software, I need to make sure it's on manual, so it boosts my voice up. Um, and the thing you'd be looking for, by the way, they're called external microphones. The other thing to remember is that when you're on a webinar, make sure you tell your, your, your viewers, put it on mute if they're not talking. Oh my God, I can't tell you the amount of dogs barking. I, I, we're in the rural area, I hear chickens gaggling. There's someone who has ducks, and I don't know if you know ducks, they don't stop. That's just 24 seven, pop, 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 pop. So everybody's got this stuff, I saw like, it's crazy. So tell people, if you're not speaking, put it on mute. And we all laugh because, you know, someone starts talking, we, you're, you're, you're muted, we can't hear you. <laughs> so that's a reality we have to deal with. The other thing is to understand that uh, no matter what program they're using, the technology still isn't perfect and there's always like a one to two second delay in audio. And just be aware of that that there's that one to two second delay, so when you're asking somebody a question when somebody's talking, sometimes we end up having, we end up stepping over each other. We've all experienced that. Again, just letting your audience know that, don't forget there's a one to two second delay, so when you're talking, make sure you leave that little, little, little moment there for us to re respond back to you. Again, t t communicating. Uh, final thought. Uh, everything I mentioned to you will work on every single type of computer and every single type of software that's out there. Um, when you're, if you're going to be recording your, um, your presentations, you want to keep in mind that you're going to, later on, um, most likely I'd probably end up getting it uh, for you and it was gonna be, we we're going to be editing. So you want to make sure that while you're doing the presentation, that you keep in mind the idea that you want, we're going to be doing editing. So uh, when you ask a question, leave a couple seconds in there so I can edit and I can do things like that. Then, but keep in mind that what you want it to look like and, and when it's finally the final product comes to you. Um, and in addition to that, go back to what I talked about before, and that is particularly if it's going to be used for editing, uh, for archival, make sure you're always looking into the camera. It's really difficult, and I, I'll, I'll admit that, to look directly into that camera because you, you have a tendency to want to look at your audience, you know, look at the reactions, and if that's okay. You know, of course, you're going to need to do that. But if more than that, if you can look directly into that camera, if you can, sometime over the next few days, uh, set up your Zoom or your Skype or whatever and record yourself just saying whatever and look at the screen and then look at the camera. Look at the screen, look at the camera and then play it back. Record it and play it back and you'll see, you go, oh wow, yeah, it's really huge. So if you want it archived, it'll really make a difference when I'm editing later on to have a really wonderful looking project that you'll be proud of is that if you're looking directly into, the, into that little camera lens, it really makes a difference. Um, let's see. Oh, another thing is, is if you have a script that you need to read, a lot of people will put the tape it or put it on some kind of a little thing so they can read it above there. We all know what you're doing. It's, you're reading. So and, and there's no way to hide it unless you're working with a teleprompter that you're looking directly into that. We all know if you put it to the side a little bit, you're getting real, you're getting real creative there. You know, so they won't know I'm reading anything. Bullshit. <laughs> we know exactly what you're doing. Let them know. Say, you know what? I didn't memorize this, and this is this, I'm reading from the script here, and so just, just look and read it. We're okay with that. As an audience, we're okay, I understand, I get that, that makes sense to me, but don't try to uh, be sneaky about it, because we all know. So, that's pretty much it. You can just keep these with you. If you ever, ever have any questions, concerns, or thoughts, ideas, uh, particularly you might be you know, trying to create your own little studio and the lighting just isn't working, you're thinking, what am I doing wrong? Call me. I've got, I've got my cell phone with me all the time. It's not, I don't care if it's in the evening or whatever. Just call me up and say, I, I've tried everything. Or I've done everything for some reason, my audio, my, it's not working. Sometimes you need to, there's little things you have to do within the computer for it to recognize your audio, the external audio. And sometimes it's just a clicking the right place to do it. Because we've all been that they, for some reason, it can't hear a damn thing. Well, you just need to open this up and go into settings and click this, and then, and then all of a sudden the microphone's recognized. So, 
Um, with those little earbuds, you just plug it into the side of your computer and it recognizes it right away. So, um, but I would definitely try with, with make sure your audio is, is working well.